Hi guys, Dane here, and it is vlog time. So, n like, literally nothing has happened since the end of my last vlog. I pressed stop, and then I pressed start again on the camera. But I like to do a little introduction when I remember, because I probably won't remember to film again until tomorrow now, unless I get a chance to do anything that isn't just work. But at the moment, I'm mostly doing work and reading. I am reading four stories by Alan Bennett, except I'm only reading The Laying On Of Hands and Father Father Burning Bright, because the other two in this are The Clothes They Stood Up In and The Lady In The Van, and I have read both of those. So yeah, crack on with it. Alright, back to work. See you soon. I also need to film my uh, Guards Guards review. I keep saying I'm going to do it and I haven't done it, so I'm going to do it. So actually, I'd forgotten that Vimes is... Jesus. So I'd forgotten that Vimes was a drunk in this one. He is a reform... So I'd forgotten. I guess we'll uh, continue this review later because Thames Water is digging up the pavement outside. It's probably five past nine. Great. All right, well, this can go in the vlog instead. It is, uh, <laughs> my eyes look crazy then. It is Wednesday, I'm a little bit hungover from the open mic, but I had a good time. It looks like I'm getting a spot here as well. Sorry, you don't need to know that. Uh, I'm currently watching, I've just started watching The Assassination of Gianni Versace. I'm going to update you on a few bits. Finally filmed my um, Guards Guards review as well. Although now I have a tag to do that I was tagged in by Bucky Lara. I finished reading Sinbad the Sailor by Anonymous, or well, it's like an old folk tale. Adventures of Shipwreck, Colossal Beast, and Fantastical Islands from 1001 Nights. Excellent, pretty solid 4, maybe even a 4.5 out of 5. I'd love to read more of the full work. This is translated by Math Malcolm C. Lyons. I've never properly, like, came across the Sinbad story before, so it was quite cool to be exposed to that. And then I finished reading the two in this. So I think last time we talked, I'd finished reading The Laying On of Hands by uh, Alan Bennett. Basically, it reminded me of Graham Greene. It was a pretty pretty good sort of novella length story uh, about basically the, the, like, the passing of uh, the masseuse to the stars. He died fairly young, I think in his 30s. And the entire story set kind of at his memorial. That was a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. And then the other one I read out of this was Father, Father, Burning Bright which I enjoyed, possibly not as much as The Laying On Of Hands, so I, I guess I'll give it like a, yeah, probably another 3.5 out of 5. If anything, The Laying On Of Hands was 3.75. Um, and that is about basically this family and the uh, patriarch of this family is, is kind of dying a bit and uh, they're all waiting for news from the hospital. And meanwhile, um, 
somebody else in the family is pregnant and about to give birth as well. So yeah, I mean, Alan Bennett's great. It also made me realise, because I've now moved on to uh, Tell All by Chuck Palahniuk, Palahniuk, I don't know how to say his name. And unless I'm wrong, I don't know, I don't mean to assume anyone's sexuality, but I'm pretty sure that pa uh, Palahniuk's gay, and so is Bennett, and I've read three Bennett books in a row, so I'm on four gay books in a row, which is uh, very nice. I say gay books, I mean, they're not about homosexuality, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna finish that, and then I think next up, what have I got over here? Well, this is my current TBR stack, so anything off this, really. Uh, let me know in the comments if I don't get to any of these that you think I should hurry up and read. The only other thing to mention, actually, I'm gonna take you around here. I've been doing lots of um, cleaning today. I, uh, I've just cleaned the, uh, the bathroom, which is good. Biggie's made a mess in here, he's gone for a poo and made a bloody mess, he does that all the time. Anyway, uh, I made banana bread. This is very nice. Let's see if we can focus on it a bit more. Oh, I made uh, low-fat chipotle chilli and I'm watching uh, The Lost World. Yeah. And Biggie's down there meowing, aren't you Biggie? Why are you meowing? Hello, it's Saturday. Um, uh, it's what? half eight in the morning I, I didn't really sleep um the reason i haven't updated you guys i've been solidly working literally solidly working my hair is also fluffy because i've just been in the shower um yeah it's been a crazy week it's actually been a bank holiday yesterday here in the uk but um yeah i, I just worked all day and i've basically been working and falling asleep and then waking up and working again so i haven't had any time to vlog or to, to like film or to edit or anything like that i have been um watching lots of uh, butchube though so there is that and i do have some books to update you on so last time i checked in i believe i was reading tell all by uh chuck palinik paulinik i don't know how to say his name i'm very sorry and this is like he's kind of more well known for like popular fiction because of things like fight club but this is more like almost literary fiction and it's kind of, it's told from the point of view of like a personal assistant to this sort of famous actress. And this assistant kind of thinks that she runs the household and really she's the one in charge. She's quite pompous and quite overbearing. Uh, she's also very, um, like very into name dropping. So actually all the way throughout all of the products and people that she talks about are all in bold. Um, I don't know if you can see that, let's see. And actually a lot of reviewers have complained about that. But uh, I mean, I could live with it. I thought it was okay. And I, I liked what he was trying to do. Um, the execution wasn't perfect. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. I definitely enjoyed it more than a lot of other people have. Uh, if there are reviews on Goodreads or anything to go by. And uh, there was also an interesting twist at the end. And basically the kind of idea is that this woman's kind of, you know, running th this celebrity's life. And then suddenly they discover that the new man in her life is like planning to write this tell-all memoir except he's predicting her death in it and so they then start foiling his plots to kill her based on what he's been writing in in this memoir in his latest draft some other books i read uh, emily bronte the night is darkening round me this is penguin little black classic number 63 bronte's most passionate powerful poems on death nature's beauty and the passage of time now unfortunately these are just kind of like the kind of old school style poetry that i just don't really enjoy um, i'll read you one i'll read you hope here hope was but a timid friend she sat without the greater den watching how my fate would end even as selfish hearted men she was cruel in her fear through the bars one dreary day. I looked out to see her there, and she turned her face away. Like a false guard, false watch keeping, still in strife, she whispered peace. She would sing while I was weeping. If I listened, she would cease. Full she was and unrelenting, when my last joys strewed the ground. Even sorrow saw repenting, those sad relics scattered round. Hope, whose whisper would have given balm to all my frenzied pain, stretched her wings and soared to heaven, went and ne'er returned again. So, I mean, there are some good lines in it, but there are also some quite bad lines in it as well. That was actually probably one of the better better poems in this. I give it like a three out of five. I just, it's just not, it's not really me, unfortunately. Like, I can kind of appreciate it for what it is, but it's just not, not what I enjoy reading, you know? Then we have Catalyst, I Hate and I Love. And uh, this is uh, Penguin Little Black Classic number 69. By turns rapturous, erotic and despairing, this astonishingly modern verse tells of an ancient Roman poet's all-consuming infatuation with one woman. And this was good. So I, I actually think a lot of this is due to the translator uh, and like uh, the way that they've kind of made it feel quite modern. So I'll read this one. There was a time, Lesbia, when you confessed only to Catullus in love. You would set me above Jupiter himself. I loved you then, not as men love their women, but as a father, his children, his family. 
Today I know you too well, and desire burns deeper in me, and you are more coarse, more frivolous in my thought. How, you may ask, can this be? Such actions as yours excite increased violence of love, Lesbia, but with friendless intention. Whatever could have possessed you to impale yourself on my iambics? What ill-disposed deity inveigled you, Rividus, into this one-sided contest? Was it a lech for celebrity at no matter what cost? Then you shall have it, Rividus, loving in this place Catalyst loves, is lastingly nailed in this lampoon. So yeah, considering this guy lived, well let's see, he lived... Born 84 BC, died 54 BC. Uh, and this translation was first published in 1966. There's like a certain timelessness to it, you know? Okay, then we have Penguin Little Black Classic number 68, The Brothers Grimm, The Robber Bridegroom. Drawn from German folklore, dark, fantastical fairy tales of wicked deeds, gruesome punishment, and just rewards. And so this has uh, The Master Huntsman, The Robber Bridegroom, The Devil's Three Golden Hairs, The Six Servants, The Bremen Town Band, Snow White, and Lazy Harry. And actually, out of those, I think Snow White's the only one that I was really familiar with, although, uh, again, a lot of the tropes you see in fairy tales that you know repeated from one fairy tale to another and that sort of thing so I have dipped into the Brothers Grimm in the past at some point I'd like to read like the full works or whatever I've actually been to uh, Grimmstrasse in Berlin as well so uh, yeah that's kind of cool I gave this four out of five and uh, yeah I mean it's the Brothers Grimm I, th I think I said in my review on my on my book review blog socialbookshelves.com there's a cheeky plug for it I think I said in that like you know what you're getting with the Brothers Grimm, you know. Okay, and then I read The Snow Angel by Lauren St. John, and this is a really beautiful edition. I got this for a pound from a charity shop, and it's kind of illustrated throughout as well. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, here we go. Uh, Catherine Hyde is the illustrator. I'm just trying to find you now. So it's got some really cool full, like, full page illustrations like this. Uh, and basically, well, Lauren St. John, she's actually one of the first authors I interviewed for my book blog. Uh, and... Uh, so I've just kind of picked up her work as and when I've seen it since then and she kind of has this this theme of like animal animal conservation throughout all of her work so um, in this one for example there's a lot of stuff about foxes um, the main character in it is like a 12 year old girl who's a vegetarian it's a middle grade I should point out but also it deals with uh, things like the Ebola crisis um, like the, the states of the slums in like Nairobi orphanages um, albinoism so there is a, an albino character called, called Snow who, who wants to be a dancer but obviously she's living in this slum and um, you know her prospects aren't particularly good but um, also because of kind of the culture there albinos are often hunted because people believe that like their bones and stuff are magical so um, she kind of covers that and then at the end there's also this kind of you know 10 page note saying here's how you can get involved here's what you can do so um, yeah I, really, I, I thought it was pretty good 3.5 out of 5 I mean I'm not really the target audience the only thing that bothered me was that the vegetarian character ate a marshmallow near the end and, and she didn't specify whether that had gelatine in but most marshmallows do so they're not vegetarian but uh, yeah and now I'm reading The Last Day by Yaroslavas Melnikas. This is a contemporary Lithuanian classic. I was sent this quite a while ago. I've actually almost finished it. Uh, it's the winner of the BBC Book of the Year, apparently. What's weird about this book is it's, kind, it's a novel, but it feels like a lot of short stories. So it started out with um, basically these books were discovered that had everybody's death date in. And so people started having like death day parties and all this kind of stuff. And this family is trying to come to terms with the fact that their younger son is going to die. And then, uh, might have been a daughter actually, don't quote me on that. Um, and then the, the, the day comes and they don't die. And then, uh, so then we go from there. Then suddenly, like, we've got this, um, the guy's living in this house and he has this piano room that he plays the piano in. And one day the piano room disappears and then after that his study starts disappearing and all these different rooms start disappearing. And now we're at this bit here where basically he keeps going to the cinema but he's not sure who operates it. There's no staff entrance or anything like that and there's this big mystery around that. So it's strange how all of these have sort of tied together into this central narrative and also it's quite a loose narrative. Um, you know, it's not, it's not heavily plot driven but at the same time it sort of is. It's quite literary as well. It's just... It's strange, I don't know. I, I still haven't decided how I feel about it yet. It's definitely a book that kind of makes you think, but um, yeah, I, it's just weird. I can't think of anything I've read that's like it. Okay, so that's me all up to date with this. I'm gonna have to go and do some more work. Oh my God. I worked out, I had, uh, well now, it's now Saturday morning and I have uh, 
four days worth of work due by midnight tomorrow. So that's, it's not going to happen basically. I'm just doing as much of it as I can and um, trying to prioritise a few bits. Because then tomorrow I'm going to Leon C to go and stay with Bex and her parents. Um, I don't know what for actually, maybe for like a barbecue or something I think. But um, yeah, I've been invited along and I haven't seen her for like three weeks, a month or something like that because she's been recovering after her uh, operation. So yeah, I want to get as much done, done as I can so I can go and just do that. Hopefully enjoy it, ha have a few beers, stay over. And then I'll come back here on Monday, which is also a bank holiday, but which also I'll pretty much have to work. As soon as I get in, I'll, I'll get back to it basically. But um, I'm trying to think of the money. Like, I'm making a decent amount of money. I actually, I've got to pay a uh, tax bill soon. So I've basically the money I'm waiting on coming in will cover that tax bill. Um, but also because I've been learning to drive and I'm probably a couple months away now from being test ready. And I don't have any savings at the moment. So I want to build up a few savings so I can, you know, get a car and get it taxed and insured and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, so I'm probably going to keep being hard at work for at least the next two, three weeks and then I'll be in a, a more reasonable sort of financial position. So, uh, so yeah, TMI, I don't know. Uh, all right, and I might go into town in a bit as well if I do get a chance. Um, I'll try and take my camera if I do, because it's quite a nice day. It's the standoff of the cats. What have you seen out there, Biggie? There is a cat out there. And they're bigs. Oh, shit, shit. He attacked my leg earlier, so I'm having to be careful here. I'm not letting you out to attack that bloody cat. It's getting close. I wonder if we turn the gamma up. I know, Biggie. I know. Where is it? You're going to try the other window. You're going to try the other window. <laughs> so these are like vegan peanut and avocado burgers with hummus, lettuce, uh, spring onion, tomato, uh, cucumber. I think that's about it. And I'm watching Jurassic Park 3 because Okay, I don't know if other people can hear me. Oh, it's a kestrel f oh, oh. Okay, it's not my bookcase. My girlfriend's dad's bookcase. Mm -hmm. They don't, oh, all very nice. Approach it. <laughs> oh, it's a hard life. What happened, buddy? That is adorable. All right, bud. Can I have that football, please? Oh. Oh. Yes, good boy. Slash girl, maybe. I don't know. You ready? You ready? We're at the sea beach. We're on Leon Sea. Oh. Oh. He just did one. Nader did all three, but hey, Google. he said it's the most fully Pause. Okay, so we're going to go back there and I'll let you know you should come with us. So, how many? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I have made slow roasted red pepper soup with. Uh, it's also got some chickpeas in it. And I'm currently watching Reckless Eating. Yeah. 
Hello, my hair looks weird for some reason because I've like I don't know I got stuck into this like sometimes I just sit here doing this because it feels nice but then it leaves my hair looking weird and then I've got this going on but whatever we'll just we'll just roll with it um, it is Tuesday uh, I was supposed to have a driving lesson today because my uh, instructor couldn't make Wednesday but he also couldn't make today in the end so I've got Thursday and Friday instead um, I have a few books to update you on and then I think we'll draw this this uh, reading vlog to a close obviously I'm back from Leon C now it was very nice um, I'll put some pictures here actually because I forgot to take video Uh, I might as well talk about this while I was there because I knew I was gonna it was like uh, three hours there three hours back And I was gone for about 30 odd hours or something So I took uh, night shift by Stephen King and uh, read that in like 24 hours, which is pretty good uh, The book itself I only gave like 3.25 out of 5 for it was okay um, Some of the stories in it. I just thought were literally just bad some of them were pretty good some of them were really good I really enjoyed children of the corn actually um, but it just wasn't quite up to the standard that I kind of expect of Stephen King, I guess. Um, I'm trying to remember what other st what other stories are in here. Because you see, the thing is, the book I've started reading now is kind of reminiscent of King in style. Oh, The Mangler was good. That was about like a haunted clothes folder uh, thing. The Lawnmower Man, that was all right. Yeah, there were some good bits, some good ba some bad bits to it. It wasn't King's best. I'd actually say it's in like his bottom 20%. Um, but I'm still, obviously, I'm still glad I read it and I'm so going through all of his books. I'm getting self-conscious now. Let me try and fix it. That'll do. All right. Then we have Kate Chopin, a pair of kilt, a pair of silk stockings. I don't actually know if I've said her surname correctly there either, but uh, number 66 in the Penguin Little Black Classics, from Louisiana's remote bayous to its gilded cities, five startling stories of awakening by one of Finn de Siecle's <laughs> America's most daring writers. We're just going to leave that failing because I don't actually know how that, that is pronounced or even what it means. But um, yeah, like, I think three or four short stories here. It was really good actually. I mean, she's got this kind of voice that shows that she is from like the American Deep South. Um, but equally, the timing of, of when it was written. Um, let me check her dates when she was around. Uh, she died, so born 1850, died 1904 in St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, it was just really interesting, I guess, to see a take on America from that time period and in that area, you know? Here we have Cats at Home, Kirsty Seymour, Your. This is like a three out of five. It's fine, it's like a little coffee table book. It's got uh, pictures of cats in it. And then, oh my God, I've dropped it. And then like little quotes uh, about just, well, either quotes about cats or like information on them. So, the curiosity of cats is legendary. It leads them astray, entices them to mischief, gets them into trouble. It also brings out some of their most endearing moments. But the thing is, it was just overwritten. So, yeah, it was like three out of five. Because the info in it was good, but the way it was written, I just didn't like it. It left kind of a sort of sour taste in my mouth, I guess. Uh, I also read The Last Day by Yaroslava's Melnikas. I think I mentioned this. This was probably what I was reading in my last update. Um, basically, it's kind of like literary fiction. It's almost like a cross between short stories and a novel, except it is definitely a novel. But we, we just have these kind of strange things happening. So uh, in the first sort of start, start of the book, there's this um, book that comes out and basically lists when people are going to die. And um, so we kind of investigate how that affects society. Then later on, um, rooms start disappearing in this family house. Um, so there used to be a piano room and that sort of disappeared. Uh, and then the next room disappears and so on and so on. And then we get to like an unusual cinema as well, which doesn't appear to have any staff. And uh, this guy has a, an unhealthy obsession with it. So, um, oh, this is written by as well. It's a contemporary Lithuanian author. Um, so uh, I can't remember who it's printed by. Noir Press is, is the publisher of this. And I was sent this for review a fair old while back. Winner of the BBC Book of the Year, it says here as well. I did enjoy it. It's definitely one of those books that makes you think and you have to concentrate a lot. But it was good. Um, yeah, probably like a 3.5, maybe a 3.75 out of 5, not quite a 4. And finally, I'm currently reading Video Nasties by Duncan Ralston. So Duncan Ralston is an indie author. I'm reading this for Todd and Danes. Indie read-along. And basically, this is a short story collection. It is quite reminiscent of Stephen King. Um, I've read Ralston before and enjoyed him as well. And so, for example, stories we have here. This guy had uh, all of his teeth were... Um, they all had to be removed. And so he got dentures to replace them. But, like, implants rather, not dentures. And... Um, 
it made him bite people and uh, then he got a job as a Santa as well so that was quite interesting uh, we've just had one where the um, there's like a, a, a young child who kind of has this, this sort of psychic ability to basically kind of make people's heads explode so that's pretty cool as well uh, really well written so far I mean I'm only a quarter of the way into it but I only started it yesterday and I am loving it and it's actually the perfect book to follow uh, Night Shift with I think as well if anything it, it's probably better than Night Shift for me so far so yeah that is it uh, and on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. So thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.